Hello Seahawks, today you're going to take notes on ratios and unit rates. Some of this may be a review to you, some of it may be a little new, so just follow along. A ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division. You could write a ratio using a colon, the word two, or as a fraction. For example, I could write a ratio 2 over 1, 2 to 1, or 2 colon 1. Okay, those are the few different ways. The most common in math is as a fraction. Okay, and you always need to keep your fraction as an improper fraction and not a mixed number. So for the example that I just gave you, it has to be written as 2 over 1 and not 2. If it was 7 halves, it would have to be written as 7 over 2 and not 3 and 1 half. Okay, it's very important that you, that you understand that. Also, your ratio should always be simplified. Okay, so if I had, let's say, 12 over 15, you can't leave it like that. You'd have to simplify that to 4 over 5. Make sure it's a simplified fraction. Not a mixed number, not a whole number, a fraction. For the next few examples, we're going to write the ratio as fractions in simplest forms. So for number 1, I have 28 over 63. Okay, and um, that would not be simplified. You need to simplify that. And that would simplify, well, what goes into 28 and 63? 7. So 7 goes into 28 4 times, and 7 goes into 63 9 times. So that would be 4 ninths. For number 2, and again, you always write the ratio as a fraction unless it asks you to write it a different way, like write the ratio three different ways. Then I would write that 4 over 9 as a fraction, 4 to 9 using the two, word 2, and 4 colon 9 using a colon, colon. Example number 2, you have 36 twelfths. Write that as 36 over 12, and that could be simplified. 12 goes into both of them. 12 goes into 36 three times, and 12 goes into 12 one time. And again, that has to be written as 3 over 1, not 3. When you're writing a ratio, it has to stay with a denominator. You have to have a denominator. You have to have a fraction. Number 3, you have 60 correct to 12 incorrect. That would be 60 over 12, which simplifies to, again, 12 again. I should have changed that, sorry. <laughs> Uh, 12 goes into both of them, 12 goes into 65 times, and 12 goes into 12 one time. Again, always simplify. And you have 15 out of 23 students have blue eyes. You would write that as 15 over 23, and that's simplified, so you would just leave that. Number 5, you have 12 pencils to 22 pens. That would be 12 over 22 which simplifies to, 2 goes into both of them, 6 over 11. Pretty simple, I would say. Here's the hard one. 3 and a third to 2 and a half. And I'm going to write this down below because I don't feel like I have that much room. Um, the first thing I would do is I would write these as improper fractions. So this would be uh, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10 thirds, 2 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5 halves. And then you just find your common denominator. Your common denominator would be 6. 3 goes into 6 2 times. 2 times 10 is 20. 2 times 3, 3 times 5 is 15. And then all you do is take your numerators, and that's how you're going to write your fraction. Now notice, when I rewrote this, I rewrote it in the same exact order. So now I'm just going to take 20 over 15, and I'm going to simplify that. 5 goes into both of them. 4 over 3, written as an improper fraction, not a mixed number. 1 and 1 third is incorrect. You have to leave it as 4 thirds. Okay, and that's just writing ratios. Let's move on. 
We're going to now talk about rate. A rate a ray is a ratio of two measures that have different units. Some keywords for rate are per, costs, out of, in, of, or to. A unit rate is a rate that is simplified so that the denominator is one. It's always per one. So some examples of unit rate are dollars per pound, miles per gallon, beats per minute. That's Dollars per pound, that's one pound per one pound. Miles per gallon, that's per one gallon. Beats per minute, that's per one minute. Okay, that's unit rate. And we're going to talk about how to find unit rate, which I think should be a review for you. Okay, so I'm not sure if I went over this because I had to pause and come back, and now I can't remember. I'm getting old. So, real quick. A rate is a ratio of two measurements that have different units. Some keywords for rate are per, costs, out of, in, of, or to. And I do believe I went over this, but anyway. A unit rate is per one, okay? It's simplified so that your denominator is, on, is one. You want to find out how much something is per one or how many pounds per ounce or what was your uh, mileage per hour, something like that. And, and for example, we have some examples here, dollars per pound. How many, uh, how much are you going to pay for uh, the bananas, let's say however many, um, however much money for one pound of bananas. Um, how many miles are you getting per one gallon? How many beats per minute? If you're finding your heart rate, how many beats are, how many beats are you beating per heart rate? Okay, so let's practice some things for unit rate. $3.95 for five pounds of banana. You wanna know how much you're paying per pound for one pound of banana. It's very simple. All you have to do <clears throat> is take $3.95 for five pounds, LBS is the abbreviation for pounds. All you're technically doing is dividing 3.95 divided by five. And I have some really good news for you right now. We're gonna start using calculators. So, $3.95 divided by five, if you plug that right into a calculator, you get 0 0.79. So that would be 79 cents, you would label that. Or, you know, 79 cents for one pound. Okay, that's unit rate, just finding out how much money you're spending per pound. Okay, next example, you have 100 feet in 14.5 seconds. You want to know how many feet that was per second. Those of you that are uh, track runners, this may be um, something that you may use when you're running track. So all you're going to do is 100 feet, and I always label these just so I know what I'm talking about in 14.5 seconds all you're going to do is 100 divided by 14.5 and again you could just plug that right into the calculator now and you get a crazy decimal you get 6.896 and it goes on and on so we're going to round that to the whole foot we'll round that to the whole so we have a 8 here that's going to make that 7 feet it's about, and maybe you could write about, because it's not exactly, about seven feet per one second. Now, obviously, if you were tracking this for your running or, or whatever, you might want to um, be a little more exact and write 6.897, something like that. But for this, I'm going to take it to the whole. Um, always read your directions. It may say round to the nearest tenths, round to the nearest hundredths. In that case, then you would round there, but we're going to uh, just round that to the whole number. Okay, in your third question, we have a package of 20 recordable CDs cost $18, and a package of 35 recordable CDs costs $22. Which package has the lowest cost per CD? Now, you may be able to just figure out which one is the better buy, but if you wanted to know exact, you would find the unit rate. So you would do, you want to know how much you're paying per CD. So we're going to find out how much per one CD. So we're going to do $18 for 20 CDs. 
and all you're going to do is 18 divided by 20. And when you divide that, you get 90. You get 0 0.9, so that's 90 cents, obviously. Per one CD. Okay? And then the other package we have, it's $22. For 35 CDs, we want to know how much for one CD. So you're going to divide 22 divided by 35. You always divide the numerator by the denominator. It's just like you would if you were changing a fraction to a decimal. And we get a crazy decimal, 0 0.6285, doesn't really matter. We're going to round to the nearest hundredth because we're dealing with money. So that would be 63 cents for one CD. So which package has the lower cost? The package with the lower cost is the $22 package with the 35 CDs. Okay, and this last part, this last part is unit analysis. It's also called, I call it dimensional analysis. You'll hear me call it dimensional analysis. And these are pretty simple one, dimensional analysis. We may go into some harder ones in the future. Um, but some real life problems involve the product. Product means multiplication of an amount and a rate. Okay, So we have 12 gallons and you're multiplying it times 8 miles per 1 gallon. Okay, Well what happens here is the way I could do this is I could write 12 gallons over 1, can I put any number over 1? I can, okay, times 8 miles per 1 gallon, okay, and just like when you had um, fractions, let's say 6 over 7 times 1 over 6, I can cross cancel out my 6's, well I can cross cancel out my units here as well, my gallons cancel out. So now I'm just going to multiply that. 12 times 8 is 96. And I'm going to keep the label that I'm left with, which in this case is miles, 96 miles. And that's how you find the product here. Now when we go into more in-depth dimensional analysis, you may be finding how many miles per gallon. In this case it is um, per 1, because you're left with a 1 as denominator, but you're not left with gallons. Okay, number two is a little bit more difficult because you see the fraction in there, but you're just going to take your five half pounds, LB stands for pounds, and I'm going to put that over one, and I'm going to multiply that by four dollars for one half pound. Okay, now um, your pounds obviously can cross cancel each other out, you're left with dollars, and basically all that's really happening here you could cancel out your denominator of 2 as well. Now I'm left with 1 as a denominator and 5 times $4 on the top. So 5 times $4 would be $20 over 1. Okay, now I want to just show you one little thing of why the denominators or how the denominators can cancel out. So let me just show you that real quick. Okay, so just let's look at this a little bit differently. If I did 5 half pounds, or, well, we could just leave it at that, um, or I could even think of that as 2.5 pounds. How about that? We do that. Okay, let's say it's 2.5 or 2.5. 2.5 pounds. Um, over one, and I'm going to change this instead of four dollars for a half pound. This way, I'm getting rid of some of our denominators. Well, if it's four dollars for a half pound, how much would that be for one whole pound? It would be double that because if a half a pound is four dollars, a whole pound is going to be eight dollars, and that might be something easier for you to look at. Again, my pounds cross cancel out. Now you're just multiplying eight times two point five. And if you do the math on that, you could use a calculator, or you could do it by hand, whatever, you're going to get $20 again, okay? 
So the denominators cancel each other out, but if you look at it a little differently, it proves that the denominators can cancel each other out. Now, if I had different denominators, um, let's say it was a third and a half, then I'd have to find a common denominator and cancel it out. But I don't have that, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, and um, if you have any questions, make sure you write them down, and we'll be going over this in class. Have a good day. Thank you.